Hey, this is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com. Going to go on a crash course here of recording different takes. Now, I'm not a huge fan, just this is kind of side note before we dive into Studio One. I'm not a huge fan of recording bunches of takes of different things. I think it's kind of a waste of time. But let's say that we want to record our lead vocal. Lead vocal is yellow. We've got our input set. Boom. So here's our beautiful lead vocal track. Okay. We hit R to record enable. We can see we have signal and now we can record. So let's just say we're recording a verse. Okay. Now, the, what, the way you can do it lots of different ways. If you want to record multiple takes of a verse, so you have several to choose from and to comp between, that's a valid technique. I would say be careful. If you're going to use takes, limit yourself to a certain number. Don't just go, personally, I think it's a waste of time to go 10, 15 takes of vocals and then spend the next week sifting through them and finding the right one. You'd be much better off going with a few and adding in that little bit of intensity so the singer knows they've got to get it right in a couple of takes. I think you'll find that works out better. But if you do want to record takes, there's a couple ways to do it. The first way is you can literally just record them on separate tracks, okay? It's a little more clunky. You've got to go mute the different tracks that you don't want. But sometimes if you're in the in the mood and you just want to see everything visually and be able to hear them if you maybe you think you might want to double some things and have two of the vocals playing at the same time this is a valid way to go and that would simply look like this we start singing we record everything looks beautiful we stop move to the next track we come back over here and mute the first one right so we don't hear that then we sing the second take by you know blah 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 turn that off mute it come to the next one hit r do it again. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's an easy way to do it. And now if we want to listen to each of them, we have to kind of play this dance of either soloing each at a time, which you can hold down option to switch between which one you're soloed. Um, but then you're not hearing the rest of the music, which is weird. So you can go in and mute everyone and then unmute the ones you don't want. But that starts to get awkward too. So that's it's an okay way of working. And I do that sometimes if I'm just, I literally, I think this is the right take but I want to record it one more time and just compare, I'll record that little spot and then just listen in solo. If it's better, I drag it up here and replace the one that was there, okay? Otherwise, this isn't a great way to go. So if you want to use takes, uh, they're called layers in Pro Tools. I'm sorry, they're called layers in Studio One. Pro Tools calls them playlists. And the way, it, you can do it several different ways. I'm going to show you the simplest way that doesn't require you remembering a bunch of stuff. So literally, you record enable, you hit record, you perform your heart out, okay? You're done. So that's one take. Let's say, let's do another take. Singer, you feel good about that? Sure, okay. So you come up here. First of all, you have to open up this information inspector window by clicking on the I or pressing F4. Now, with the track selected, you can come over here to layers and add a new layer. Boom, add that layer, press record, and now we're singing again. And stop. Okay, that sounded good. Let's get one more just for funsies. New layer and record. Okay? So now we've got, we've essentially got three takes recorded, and but you can't see them. You have to cycle through here to get to, to each one, right? So there's a couple things you can do. Um, cycling through is one way, and that's an easy way to do it, uh, especially if you knew, let's say, take three was the one. That's it. We're done. Let's move on. But a lot of times you're going to want to do some sort of comping. And the way to do that is to change what you're looking at over here so you can actually see the different layers on your track. Took me a second to find it. Great thing about Studio One, you don't have to remember a lot of these shortcuts. For me, I just hovered over the track and right clicked and I said, oh right, there's that expand layers. Now, I don't know if there's a keyboard shortcut for that, but it doesn't matter. So now, if you look at this carefully, a lot of systems have something similar to this. This is our first layer that we have selected over here, right? That's still showing up on the track, but it expanded out to show us layer two and layer three. Now, what's going on here? Well, you've got a couple of neat features here. It's a very simplified, it's essentially several different tracks that are packed into one. They all have the same output, they all have the same input, everything's the same, except now we can see all of our playlists or all of our layers together. Now, if we wanna hear one, we can click solo here on this track, on this little lane here. It'll automatically jump between them, deselecting one and selecting the other. So we can go through and we can hear what it sounds like. If we don't solo this one, then we're just listening to the main track up here. 
Okay, so now that's a really easy way for us to switch between. We can solo this, and again, it's just soloing this layer, layer two, so we can hear it, but it's not actually soloing it in the sense of muting all other tracks. If you look, we've got it soloed here, but if we look in our mixer, none of the other tracks are soloed. As opposed to soloing the actual track itself, that mutes everything else. Okay, so when you do this layer view, you can quickly listen to each take without muting everything else in your session. Okay. The other cool thing is you can actually start to do some comping. So with this selected, you can sit over here and just select a part and it'll automatically jump it up to the top. If you don't like it, you can get rid of it and jump it back. One thing I would recommend to make sure you don't delete things is create a new layer and call this layer, you can rename it just to make your life easier, call it something like comp. So then we have that selected. So the comp track is blank, and then these three are our layers that we're trying to figure out. So we can listen to this one. Nope, that one's lame. Listen to this one. Yes, that's perfect. Let's keep that. All you do is just hover over it, and boom, it brings it up to the top. It's a super fast way to do comping. So you can go between your different, different takes, and it'll automatically bring them all in, and I believe it automatically crossfades. It's a super cool way to comp that I personally don't use enough because I didn't realize how easy it was till just now. <laughs> They've changed a few things since the last time I did it. Very, very cool, uh, and you can even duplicate things if you need to by clicking that duplicate button. Um, you can remove layers and do all that stuff. You can hide layers. You can do lots of things, but it's still a very simple process. Any other system I've used that has this form of recording takes and comping, it gets pretty complicated. But with this one, it's actually really easy, really simple, and really powerful. And so when we're done, we say, okay, we've got our perfect comp. We can come over here, right-click again, deselect that expand layers, and now we're seeing our comp track here, and all the others are still hidden under here if we ever want to get back to them. Very, very cool system. Can save you a ton of time when it comes to recording takes and vocals and really anything else like guitar solos that sometimes requires a few takes to get right. Okay, that's it for this video. Go have fun.